Hello everyone. It is your lovely host Daniel Kujo Delong. You can also call me the actor's preacher. I bring you greetings from the Holy Spirit. This is God in me. I am on an assignment and it's simple to reveal the deeper things of God to mankind. God in me always has been blessing people. You want to know what it really is? Just watch this. This is SBN Christian talk show dubbed The God in Me. Have you wondered why something that was supposed to break me on the right actually strengthened me on the left? Wondered why what was supposed to take my sanity off brought me back stronger? It is because of the God in me. There is a show that we talk to seasoned men and women of God about the things of life and the revealing things of the Holy Spirit which will strengthen our Christian faith in God. That is God in me. Okay, so you don't know everything about God in me. We are actually empowering people and we are lifting your souls to love God the more. Like I said, my name is Daniel DeLonga. You can call me the actor's preacher. And, and, I, and I am on an assignment by the Holy Spirit. Today we are going to talk about um, faith. Holding on to faith. What do you do when God says no? Somebody may even ask if God says no. But keeping on with your faith when God is not answering. Or when God says no. And we have a powerful, I have a powerful friend, brother, man of God, who is also a movie maker. He's a film maker. He's, he's been doing films for God knows how long. And he's in the person of Pascal Amanfo. I call him M O G, Apostle Pascal Amanfo. And he is the lead pastor or the general overseer of people like Christ. Ministry, people like Christ Ministry at Dakman Marshalls University College. And so, if you are going to watch us right now, you can join them there. Uh, I know the fellowship Sunday evenings from five or four. From five, yeah. So, Sunday evenings, Marshalls University College, go there. People like, like Christ Ministry. And uh, he's a powerful man. He's, he's done a lot of movies. He's been preaching around. God arrested him some years back. And now he's doing a wonderful thing with the word of God. He's one man who is really kept on the faith, moving away from addictions, moving away from all sort of negativities, and staying with the Lord. And so today, there's a lot of experience he's going to share with us. Emoji, thanks for having me. God ah, bless you. Good bless to be here. Hope everything is fine. By God's grace. By God's grace. Uh, yeah, our term is emoji. He calls me emoji. <laughs> emoji. So it's normal. When you hear emoji, don't get confused. Okay, emoji. Um, let's start with faith. Yep. Before you even enter into faith, let me, let me just say, let, let, let's talk something. Let's talk about something small. People like Christ. Yes. What informed that whole idea? <sighs> okay. Uh, it was a thinking that the end point of Christianity is that it's not a religion. God doesn't want us in the four walls of a building uh, every Sunday or every Wednesday or Friday, you know, shouting or screaming hallelujah. It's the fact that God has called us to himself to be a reflection of his person on the earth and in the world today. And so he's raised the people like himself. Um, uh, everything that we read about Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago will be fairy tale without us being proof producers of his power, his presence in the world today. We can't see Peter, my brother. We can't see Moses. We can't see Elijah. But people can see you and I. So we are a complete reflection of him based on our born-again experience and salvation. So it was that vision to raise a people who will reflect God, not just in church, but in the marketplaces of life. And that's why I think we are missing the greatest impact in the world today, because we are good Christians in church. We know how all the worship songs, but out there in the banking hall, in the market square, in the schools, 
that's where we don't feel the impact of the of God life in us. Mm. So I think that's that, for me that's that's the vision that, that that we had, and especially as a young adult church, and our generation of course is eclipsed in so many things. And I'm thinking that, and I'm believing that God is raising a people to Himself who will reflect the entirety of divinity in humanity. Mm. Wow! So that that wow. So that's that's, that's, that's basically yes, people, that's people, that's people like, like Christ. Christ. So yes. we need to walk. Yes, definitely. We, we, like, 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 like he did. As he is, so are we where yeah. in this world. Yeah. Okay, so now let's, let's come to our topic for today. Faith. Yes, faith. What is faith to a layman? Hmm. To a layman, faith would be expectation. And that would be just where it ends to a layman. I'm expecting something. I have faith that this will be done. People say, I have faith in you. I have faith that will be done. But faith goes beyond expectation. Um, faith, first of all, is a mystery. And that's where it differs from hope. Uh, hope is... I'll, I'll be asking that question. Yes, yeah. because hope is logical expectation. Okay. But faith is spiritual conviction. Mm. So the Bible says faith is the evidence of things not, not seen. Not seen. So hope is logical expectation. I expect this to happen. Hope is close to optimism. Faith is, it's not happened, but I have the evidence now. now. So the lesser is included in the greater. There's hope in faith, but faith goes beyond hope. So logically, I'm hoping, I'm faithing. This might happen tomorrow, but faith says now, even before the break of dawn, it is mine. The question then is now is where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? Yeah. That's where he says, looking unto Jesus, the author. the author and the finisher of my faith. So I don't have it, but I know it's done. By virtue of Calvary, it is mine. So I always say that the challenge for the only challenge for the believer is to manifest in the physical what you already possess in the spiritual. You already it. That's why he says he calls us to become. Be means two words: be and come. We are already it. Be already finished. Then he calls us to the process of becoming what we already we are in the spirit. So, so that's 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 the faith is now. I have it now. I'm not expecting it logically. I might be expecting, it, but I have it now. I have the evidence. Where is it? It's on the cross. the cross. It is mine already. Okay. So, what do you say to children of God who find themselves in situations where they are so expecting something? And it's not happening. And they're not seeing signs of it happening. You know, mm. fall into the Jordan River seven times <laughs> and you shall be made clean. Mm. For crying out loud. What After is that? the third or fourth time. What is that? Let me see a spot. Yes, of, oh, yes. Then I know that, okay. Yes, yes. Something seven, is working. Yeah. Yeah. We're in, working. Go around Jericho seven mm. times and, 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 and do a resounding noise. After six times, I should see a crack. Yes, at least. At least, let me see yes. a crack after the fifth time. Fifth time, yes. Okay. This is, this is working. <laughs> but the sixth time, nothing. Nothing happens. Until the seventh. Now, it takes someone who is so deep and rooted in the word to be able to say, I'll go seven times. Mm. Mm. Many people will just stop at three, four, five. Mm. What can you say to such people to lift their level of faith? I think what you're saying is very important because the fact is, no matter who we are in the body of Christ, from a pope to an archbishop to whoever you are, we all go through the fight of faith okay. at any level. Mm -hmm. Somebody's believing God for, for 100 cities. Another person is trusting for a million dollars or some. Whatever level you are, we all go through, and we all go through the frustrations, the depression, the mental exertion when we are believing for something. Like you're saying, God is not saying anything or I'm not seeing the visible, tangible signs that this is working. I once preached a message I called, There is Nothing. And it was based on the scripture where Elijah sent a servant to go pray. He was also there. There is nothing. Go back. There is nothing. Until the seventh time, he said, I see something rising from the sea like the hand of a man. And I said, the, 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 the distance between the first time and the seventh time when he goes, that's where many people fail. That's where many people fail. So, so the issue then becomes... Why am I not seeing a visible sign of what I'm believing God for? Or why is God not saying anything? Again, many times we want God to do in a moment what he needs to do in a process. Wow. Many times we want God to do in a moment what he needs to do in a process. The key word for me here is not even the process. It's the fact that he needs. Not that he wants. 
Wants means out of his sovereign desire as God. He needs because he needs to prepare us for what we are believing him for. So it is needed. But we get frustrated, we get so depressed. Yes, because we want it now. But he needs to do it in the process. He needs to bring us to that place. The wilderness experience, go through. He needs to bring us to that place of perfection where he knows that we are ready for exactly what we're asking for. But because we are trapped in this body and we're ruled partially by our senses, no matter how spiritual we are, we all have our senses and mental faculties. So we will get to that place where we cannot see what God sees and we, we, we want to jump the process. But many times, and this is very fascinating emoji, and, I, I, and you must know this, the fact that it was David who informed us that he killed the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. There was no scripture that specified. It was David who said. Mm -hmm. Now my question is, where were the women who were singing his name when he killed the lion and the bear? I consider, physically speaking, killing a lion a greater feat than killing Goliath. Exactly. After all, Goliath is human. Yeah. You go after a lion who's taking a lamb, you rescue the lamb from the mouth of the lion. The lion comes against you, slay the lion. There was no one to sing his name. There was no one to shout, David yeah. had killed a lion, up until he showed up in the battlefield where Goliath was. Then the women said, Saul had killed a thousand. David had killed ten. How many did David kill? David just killed one man. Yeah. But in the process where preparation meets the promise, the little you do becomes magnified in the eyes of men. Wow. But God will keep you for 16 years in the backside of the desert. You will kill lions and bear, and there'll be no one to sing your name. Mm -hmm. It's the process where he gets to that place. But then the question then is, what is he doing when he's not speaking? And I've been here so many times in my life, and this is what God, this is what God gave me. When the hen sits on the egg, all the hen does is sit on the egg. The chick in the egg is wondering, why are you not ruffling your feathers? Why are you not doing something? But the hen has to sit on the egg for at least 21 days to generate enough warmth for the chick to mature. So many times, emoji, what God is doing is just sitting. He sits on that expectation. He broods on it until we mature into what we already are in the spiritual. But because the hen is not moving, the hen is not, the hen is not doing nothing. All we see is God sitting. We get frustrated. But even in God's silence, there's something happening behind the scenes. We are just not seeing it. We are just not seeing it. Wow. <laughs> Man, that is, that is crazy. This, uh, the, the, the whole hen, the hen and chick, eggs, as, uh, the whole story is really, we really brought my mind to it. <laughs> yes, but it just sits. The hen doesn't move. It doesn't move, it just sits there. But it's actually something is going on behind the scenes. So, so God knows what you need as a child of God. Everything. And he's just everything. He's prepared it, everything. And he's just there behind the scenes. But because we're not seeing something physically, I mean, we are wired to want to see. That's why he says to Thomas, blessed are those who believe even when they don't see, we're wired. And we all go through that. But behind the scenes, God is doing something. And I know those, some people are watching me right now, and they're they like, Charlie, I have sown seeds, mm. I have prayed money, I have fasted. I have gone to a man of God, I have gone to the wilderness to do some prayer, gone to the mountains and all sorts of things. I have lived a holy life, but I still see people who are doing all manner of crazy mm. stuff, getting blessed, and I'm still where I am. And you are telling me to keep on keeping on? For how long will I keep on keeping on? It's, it, it, it's been... 10 years, 15 mm. years mm. Of, of looking for the right man. And it keeps coming and going. I don't see the right person. People come and mess up my life and then they leave and all manner of things. How do we encourage such people to still stay in line? Because a lot of people are backslidden because of their inability to hold on to the faith. I think the key thing you just said is people saying that other people are maybe less spiritual, not living such righteous lives and getting stuff done. And I was sharing with a sister to this girl. She said to me, um, she was at bed there and said, I'm older and don't have a man. And I said, you, you've not put yourself in a place to get a man. I said, what do I mean by that? And people who are doing words that I'm doing and getting a man, I said, look, it becomes then the fact that when God gives us a word, which is a promise, and puts us in a process, every promise is personal. And I've realized that the fact that what will happen for Jonathan will not happen for David. Mm -hmm that David is given 
to do Jonathan is given to David as a friend, as a soul brother, and will do his part in saving the life of David. Mm -hmm. But the throne is not given to Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Jonathan will miss destiny when he looks over his shoulders to try and become a David. Mm -hmm. So many times, when we do that thing where we look over our shoulders at what God is, suppose that they're not even God, what's happening in the life of the next person, we cheat ourselves of our process. And MOG, I found that, that it's always tied to purpose. The fact that we don't arrive here on our own accord. We arrive here based on purpose. And everything God will do in your life, everything you believe, must be tied to purpose. purpose. So sister, he won't allow you to just marry anybody because of what you carry on the inside of you. Some other person would date for three months and spend every Friday in nightclubs and get married. It might take you 15 years for that right person to walk into your life because there is something you carry in your life that you cannot just make you be with any other person. Any other person. Exactly. And you cannot fast track that process. Mm. You can't fast track No. But people think that we fast. We don't. And anyway, let's think about it. Does God really need your food to bless you? Okay. We, we, we do that sometimes tied to our emotions. I fasted for this thing and, and all of that. None of what we do based on New Testament principle of grace can release God's blessings based on scriptural teaching. We do that because we want to put ourselves in the most sensitive place to hear from God, to understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. But the fact is that fasting and giving, we are giving not because we want to be blessed, but giving out of what he has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. So fasting and giving and sowing seeds, although they have spiritual importance, doesn't fast track your process. Mm -hmm. When you are waiting, you do what waiters do. You serve. It will take a lot of patience, a lot of endurance, a painstaking process to go through. And so your process comes in phases. So the key thing for me is that when I'm in a waiting production, what am I supposed to learn in this phase? Mm -hmm. Because until I get the lesson for this first phase, I do not graduate to the next phase. And it's my progressive graduation in phases that takes me to the place of the completion of my promise. So what am I learning in this phase? God, what are you teaching me? I'm looking for the signs that lead me on. So as soon as I get those signs, he moves you on. So when you ever, who, anyone who's listening to us, when you're not witnessing, ask God, what am I supposed to get, learn from this phase? I'm, he's saying something. And many times, man of God, God is saying something we are just not listening. Listen. Because he's not saying what we want to hear. Okay. Okay, now that's a new one. You are not listening, not because you are not hearing. You know, because he's not saying what because you want. Because he's not saying what, what you, you, want. you want to hear. You want to hear that you have a husband, but he's telling you that you need to deal with your character. He's telling you to deal with your character. Yeah. Because that that anger, you no, want. that impatience, mm -hmm. that knack to be desperate, to take spontaneous wrong decisions, mm -hmm. he's saying deal with that in the place of prayer. But we are binding and losing and dealing with spiritual wives and husband, but he's saying something else. This we is are, we are telling you praying a mess. Praying a mess some, most of the time. Most of the, and it, it, it drags your waiting process. It drags your season on your faces because God will keep you there until you. Because my let's be sincere. There are certain things that God will not release into your hands until he can trust you. Exactly. There are things. No father will release there anything. Are, yes, there are levels of blessings that come with. In fact, the key blessings in the kingdom come by the maturity of inheritance. The okay. fact that you grow into it to become it. As a child, you cry, give me bread from the fridge. The son knows where the fridge is. He walks in up. So there are things that, that come, inheritance that comes by maturity. maturity. And the only thing that matures you as a Christian is the process. The process. You need to understand. You need to get it. You need to get it. Otherwise, you shut yourself out of levels that God will want you to grow into. Mm. So many people just go through the process. I'm just waiting. Oh, please help me. But we are not growing through the process. And God is waiting for us to grow through the process. Kill the lion. Kill your bears. Face the frustration of nobody being there to clap for you. And would you like a rehearsal? You're an actor. When you rehearse on stage, many times, the audience is not there. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying, oh, you did well today. But you are preparing yourself for the main mm -hmm. show. The applause comes when the curtains open on the main show. Then every rehearsal you have been through has paid off. No wonder he's a filmmaker. <laughs> okay, so we are talking about uh, keeping faith when God says no. And we are having a wonderful time with Pascal Amam. We'll go for a quick break. We'll be right back.
Okay, so welcome back. This is God in me, and we have been talking about keeping faith when God says no. And uh, it's been wonderful so far. If you're watching us right now, it's been so wonderful. Whatever you are going through, just keep on keeping on. Faith, I say faith, is not... See, in the world, we we'll say seeing is believing. Mm. But faith is believing mm. a seeing. You need to believe. You need to hope for it. When somebody says, where is your car? Tell them, I don't have it yet. Don't say, I don't have a car. Believe that you have it. It's just not there yet. Because God is actually taking you through a process. He can't give you a car now. When you can't even afford a, a two square meal for yourself. I will only give you a car. You can't even buy the buy one. A car is a whole baby on its own. So understand, as Pascal was saying, that when things are going are delaying, God is actually walking you through a process. You understand? So that is one thing I need you to get clearly. That God is walking you through a process. Get it straight, and then you understand the principles of faith. All right, MOE. Yes, please. So let's 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 get back uh, to what we were saying now faith somebody somebody is on the verge of giving up and mm. saying all manner of things have you have there been a time in your life where a tragedy had hit you and you're like where is god and you're almost losing that faith has there been a time definitely Definitely. I think that when you are in when you're in it, it's difficult. But I think it's something every Christian should go through. When you are in it, you should go, you should go through it. When you are in it, it's, it's, it's impossible to say this because you feel like your world is coming to an end. But when you go through it and God brings you out, then you think that mm -mm, if you're a believer and you haven't come to that point, you probably have not matured enough. You need it. You need to be in that place where you say, I'm done. I'm gone. In fact, many times you say, I quit. I'm, I, I'm done with this. You need to get to that place because God will always give you a situation for you to get a revelation. Uh, I don't know him as a healer until I feel pain and yes. I'm sick. And then, and then he gives you, and then I, he's revealed to me as God the healer. I, I don't know him as God the provider until I'm in need and then he provides. And then I know certain. So you, you cannot cheat me out of my convictions. Mm -hmm. I believed him for this breakthrough. This I had this bill to pay, and last minute it comes true. For every day of my life going forward, I will remember that, that, that one. Thing. You exactly. cannot tell me now. I don't believe now, no longer because of what Paul told the Galatians, mm -hmm. but because of what he has yeah, done. He has been revealed to me. To me myself, exactly. But but it's a very. I don't think MOG, I don't think we say this enough in church. And it's going to be many times painful. Because we get very charismatic with our he's and yes, and you know, as preachers, how we do our exactly. thing and all that. But that's wonderful. But we need to let the people know that many times it will be painful. It will test your last resolve. Do you believe that sometimes God uses you as a victim of his purpose? Very well. And if he, he, he's God all by himself, mm -hmm. because of his sovereignty, he mm -hmm. doesn't care what you would think. Mm -hmm. Because see, there's something I read in Judges, and he said, for I blended the eyes of Samson mm -hmm. against every lady mm -hmm. but for the Philistines. So, so I will destroy yes. the Philistines. Yes. Which says, which tells me that God is ready to make you whatever he wants you to become just because of what he wants to achieve. achieve. And I think a lot of people are going through yes. this kind of thing. What, yes. what, what do you say to this? How do you get Christians to understand this principle. Again, like I was saying, these things, you may not even get it until God puts you there. It's a revelation that comes to you personally because like you're saying now, growing up, almost every preacher I know has blamed Delilah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, there's a revelation about Delilah being who she is. Mm -hmm. Almost every preacher has been. You have popular sayings about ah on the laps of Delilah, and that's been the relation that has blessed. But you need when you get in it, when you are something, you not realize that no, there was a blindness in my eye. That anytime I look at another woman, it must be that Philistine. Yeah. But you need to be something to uncover that. Exactly. So many times when it comes to this very deep things of God, it's the person who is in it. That's why I said you must when you're in it, you must say God, 
what am I supposed to learn in this phase? What are you showing me? And I, so get past your emotions, get past your, your feelings and see what God is showing. Now, this is a missing scripture emoji, which, which I think deals with this perfectly. When the, the, the master of the vineyard or the field wakes up and sees tares planted amongst his wheat, the servant says, or he says to the servant, that the enemy has done this. The first revelation we get is that this is not normal. We planted wheat and we are seeing tars or weeds. The enemy has done this. We end there because we bind and lose the enemy. But the servant said to the master, do we go and uproot the tares? The master says, no, leave it. So if God is saying, in the midst of that pain, you're going to wake up every morning and see that pain staring you in the face. You are not fasting to get this pain off. You are not fasting to get this problem or situation off. I am going to let you stay in it. And every single day you wake up, you will be reminded that this thing is still here. The lack is still here. The husband is not there. The business is not there. You will stay staring in your face, your task in the middle of your way. But then, I was thinking about it. I was wondering, I said, but what, what keeps us, what keeps this this guy who has planted his field going, even when he's seeing the tears. And then God said to me, what is keeping the tears is not what the farmer has done, but what I have done. Because I give it seed to the sower. Mm. The seed you planted, first of all, is me. Mm -hmm. So no matter how the stars stay, there is a sustaining power in the wheat to keep the wheat in the middle of the tears. So no matter how trying your situation is, there is something that God put in you that keeps you through it. That's why I say it's some way, somehow miracle. Her 2019 was hard. I don't even know how I survived. But some way, somehow you survived. Some way, somehow. It's not your intelligence. It's not your skill. It's the fact that he gave you that seed. He gave you that ministry. Exactly. He gave you that gifting. Exactly. He gave you that anointing. Mm -hmm. So he keeps you some way, somehow. And you can't explain it to the next person. Tell me, I would have died last month. I don't even know how I am still here. But some way, somehow he keeps you. He keeps you. And of course, what's the good news? He says to the servant, when it is harvest time, then we will gather together the wheat. So we are sure that no matter how we face that situation, the wheat will still blossom into a harvest. So if you stay there, lean on God. That's why I say lean on your own understanding. Trust him. Some way, somehow, he will get you through that situation. It might be six months. For me, it might be two years. Whatever time your process takes. But some way, somehow, God will sustain you through it all. And when he brings you out of it, then every single thing you have been through makes sense. Then you understand why the divorce had to happen, why she had to leave, why that relationship had to break, why that person had to leave that ministry. Why you, you, everything you have been through now makes sense because he puts it together like a puzzle in a perfect picture. But when you are in it, you need to trust him. and Hold on. And know that, like you said from the beginning, there is a purpose for my pain. That pain is not a breaking. Many times, it's a betting. I'm carrying something and I need to release it. And God is taking me through this in my church, just like a woman in labor. And the fact that I'm about to produce something. And I might not know exactly what it is, but this pain is not a breaking. There's a purpose for my pain and God is pushing something out of me. What, what, what then do you say to situations, you know, like, the um, guy at the pool of Bethesda for 38, you understand? Mm -hmm. or, or not even him. Uh, let, me, let me rather use that another, cite another example. The other guy who was, who, who was, who, who was blind mm -hmm. and the disciples were like, who sinned? Who sinned? Yes, 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 yes. And Jesus was like, nobody sinned, mm -hmm. not even him, mm -hmm. but for the glory of the God, he sinned. How, how, how do we explain that? Yes. Well, you know what I always say? I've thought about this many times, and I always say to myself that... No, but do, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because when I, I read the Greek Bible and mm. to understand that particular situation, mm. it's not like the guy was blind, though. Mm. He had no eyes. eyes. Because the, 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 the way Jesus healed blindness... is not was a way so different. It yeah, was a different healing entirely, he, he yes. He picked clay, and he added saliva to it. Yes. He picked the natural, which yes. is clay. Mm. Bible says he picked clay. This is a picked sand. He mm. picked clay. clay. I wonder why that, where he got clay, clay from, from at that yeah, time. Yes. And he added saliva to it. So the natural and the supernatural meant, yes. and then he created eyes. eyes for the guy. Yeah. So he said, for the glory of the Lord to be seen. Yeah. I can just, let's imagine the guy is like maybe 30 years mm. or 25 years. 
So my whole life in five years, as, as I'm waiting born without eyes. And the reason is because God will want his glory to be seen. How do I deal with this as a Christian? But many of emoji, many of us are born without things. Because I always say that emoji, that guy's a particular experience was born without eyes. Somebody was born without a father, a father. born without a family name. My, um, Pastor Nick, I can't get his surname right now, was born without arms and legs. But he preaches the word to millions now. The other guy who has no arms and legs thinks that the best he can do is to get stuck in traffic begging for arms. We are all born without certain things. There is our original nature as man from Adam comes with deficiencies that are things in us crying for the glory of God to be expressed. Whichever way you look at it. Whichever way. So there, there, there are things already. I think that God puts a certain amount of void in mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. That when we yield that void to him, use it for his glory. Mm -hmm. There is certain things in us, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual. There's an emptiness that God puts in that what, it's Only when he steps into our lives, that he, he fills that void and it becomes for his glory. For some people without eyes, some people without name, without a family name, without, without hope in this world. Many people are, are they've given up on life. But the very minute you release that void to God, he has the profound ability to turn that thing for you. That's why I always say that God puts a miracle in a ridicule. And the foolish things of this world, mm -hmm. he uses to confound the wise. So much so that the, the greatest professors cannot fully describe God. He is God all by himself. And so whichever we look at it, there's something that we all are born with. I, I, I don't want to mention names, but I, there's, a, there's a famous millionaire somewhere in this part. I won't mention the country. And he's so successful in business. And I found out that his first son is autistic. Wow. And it got me thinking. With all the money. With all the money. I, I don't mention his name. His first son is autistic. And I'm thinking, with all the millions of dollars, he still has that one void. That one thing. His first son is autistic. So his daughters are doing well, but his first son, you rarely not see him yeah. posted because he's autistic. And, and, and per inheritance. Is that and I know, yes, per inheritance. Yeah. And I know that if you ask him, he will be ready to part with almost all of If my son, my first son, can come to the fullness of his mind. And there are many others who don't have that money who don't have that money, who have a, a son who is whole in his mind, but simply can't afford fees to get into school. We all have that void that God needs us to release in our weakness and our frailties and say, Lord, we cannot do without you. We need you. And he steps in and turns that ridicule into a miracle again for his glory. But then it now becomes the power of choice. What do I do when I'm in that space? What do I do? Pastor Nick had no arms, arms and legs. He says, there is still a purpose in me waiting to cry out. What exactly. do I do? Exactly. Because the power of choice is so choice is so powerful that you can use your choice against him who gave you the power of the choice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can choose against God. And so many people, so, so that's why then we have no excuse. The arm robber has no excuse. Forgive my language, the prostitute has no excuse. No matter how you look at it, there's someone with more, bigger void in their lives who is releasing that void to God for his glory. So you go into arm robbery, you go into stealing, whatever, you say, oh, I have lack. We all lack something. There's something in us crying for God's glory to be revealed. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask this before we wrap up uh, uh, on this conversation. And everyone who is watching us right now who is actually giving up and, 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 and thinking that all is lost, all hope is lost, and um, you can't get anything. Let's still have faith. God is working. Silence means he's working. Like, like Apostle Pascal said, silence still means God is working. The fact that you are not hearing him speak doesn't mean he is not working. He is still working. Just get that in mind and be ready to, uh, 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 be ready to receive that miracle at the right time. Now, Pascal, in one minute, I want you to advise anyone who is watching us right now on how to keep their faith at a point that they know that I have fasted, I have asked God, I'm expecting this visa, I have been given the date, I fasted for seven days leading to the date, I got there, and then they bounced me. You know, and, mm. and the person's like, why would God let this happen? And somebody who's just fooling around just goes and gets the visa. You know, son. I've watched in a minute, just talk to such people. Okay, 
I, I think that very profoundly, what I've found again is that time is a great revealer of things. Mm. And many things will not happen now, but happen in time. And we all have different, we're all in different time zones and have different times. Now, you get up at 5 a.m. and you go up and you look to the skies and the skies is dark and the skies are dark. You get up at 6, go up, and it's just starting to get bright a bit. You get up at 7. It's now very bright. Get up at, at, at nine, the sun is blazing the skies. You know, and you look at the sun, it's not so intense. You wonder, oh, is it going to be really hot today? You go at 2 p.m., it's hot and you are sweating. It's the same sun. The size of the sun did not change. What's the difference between the sun at 2 p.m. and 5 a.m. is time. The time revealed a different intensity of the sun. After you have done all you think you can do, physically, logically, even spiritually, it is time to wait and rest. That's why it says, be still and know that I am God. Get done being frustrated. Get done being angry. And uh, the preachers don't say this, but you can get angry. But after you're done with those emotions, it's time to say, I will be still and know that you are God. And you, we, you do not outgrow trust in God. No matter your level of spiritual, you must always trust him. So after you've done all you can, I want you to be still and say, Father, I don't understand all of it, but I choose to trust you. Father, I don't understand all what is happening to me, but I choose to trust you. And in that ridicule is your miracle. All right, this is where we go for a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Like I said, in that ridicule is your miracle. And just keep trusting God. He's still God. We are going to go before the Lord in the next few minutes, some intercessory prayers. He's a man of God. He prays for people. And God uses him mightily. I can't let him leave this place without sharing a prayer with you. So over to you, Pascal. You can choose your camera and then let's go. Everyone watching us right now, get ready. Just join us in prayer for just this few minutes. And I believe that you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are watching us, I want you to just connect in spirit as we pray. We pray for everyone in the waiting season of their lives. Everyone who is waiting, believing, uh, and physically and logically are not seeing the results of what they are waiting and trusting him for. Father, we pray for supernatural strength. May God strengthen you in the name of the Lord Jesus. May God give you a conviction in your spirit. Like even though you cannot see it, may there be that inner conviction that says, I will trust you, I will believe you. And for as many who have who have black backslidden because of uh, haven't believed God for something, not seeing it, and have lost their faith, mm -hmm. uh, and like the prodigal son wandered afar from from the pathways of righteousness and for the house of the Father, we pray for you where. Wherever you are, we decree that destiny cannot stop here. Jesus. May God bring you back home. In the name, in the name of, of the Lord, wherever home, you are, we, we speak come to your spirit. Home. We command, let it be a stirring. Jesus. In the name of the Lord, Jesus, yes, may God Lord. order your step. May he bring you back home. Father, we draw them from the east, the west, the north, and the south. We speak to those in the swine fields of life. May they be a stirring. May you arise and 
say, I am going back to my father's house. Kabai itosha Allah. Rido no mo sibra kitul adeyaha. Lipe toko ya ataliba adaba shatala. Debran tole me deyam toko shiata lege deya pata ya. Riko pa lepa ita ya pa ikare ba ya. We're praying for as many who who have a deadline. Something that is a deadline. It, 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 it might be life defining. You you know that if God doesn't show up, you 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 look finished and it's done. You are facing a oh, yeah, deadline. Yeah. I don't know what it is. A deadline. You know you have your back to the wall. All else has failed. But I remember the words of David. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. help. My help Amen. cometh from the Lord. Ha, we are ha, praying for divine help, divine yes, intervention. Divine God, as many who are pointing like what is it? God, I need you to show up. <laughs> we are praying for you right now. <laughs> We will speak into those situations. We decree. Jesus, May there be a divine Jesus, intervention Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Kadila pa apa yoha. Rebondo sadia prata kaya ha. Liban tuye nelebe super shataya. Lord, may you show up for them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ba talu kataba ya ha. May the Red Seas part. Matoya ilabada ya. May the hand of God be released. The the hand of God be released into your situation. May God make a way where there seems to be no way. Lastly, I want us to pray for the church. Uh, um, in, in, um, in, we're in a season where, man of God, where I think that the church is going through so much shaking. And it's not just the church, not just the preachers. Now it's trickling down to the congregation, the people, the people, all kinds of things shaking our faith. And we're praying that Father, is, but Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be filled. I will pray for all men of God, every believer, everyone in the house of God. We pray that the covering of Elohim shall be spread over every life. We pray for the faith, for Christianity in this nation of Ghana, across the world. My God. Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Zam taturi ibala haya. Manoko shataya malam. May you protect your church. May you keep your church. Dabali kova hande. Liga brato koya da hande. Rateso apa likapa ya ha. Ito mane kabala ha. By you to ya ya. We bind the hand of the enemy and every agenda raised and released against the church. Kadi iparo ya kataya. We yamato ya bala. We command the assets to cease. In the name of the Lord Jesus, man, dada, by yapa. And if you're listening to us, and perhaps you, you're far away from God, not giving your life to God, and you don't know this Jesus, and you, uh, or maybe you're a believer and you strayed from the path, and wherever you are, we just want to pray this one, this one minute. We ask that the, wherever you're listening or watching, watching us right now, may, may, may the hand of God touch you. May, may there be a change of heart. We, we speak peace where there was trouble, Jesus. and we command that God draws you to himself. May, may you receive a brokenness, a, a conviction of your sins. Where is the anointing that convicts men. May, may the love of God be revealed before your eyes. May you come to know this Jesus. I want you to say quietly, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I open my heart to you. I cannot save myself. I, I confess my sins. And I, and I decree and I confess that you are Lord of my life. Save me. I receive you into my heart. I, from this moment on, I live for you and you alone. I give you my life. Do with me as you will. Jesus, you are Lord of my life. From this moment forward, I walk in light and darkness has no place in me. God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. It's just such a powerful prayer. If you just said this prayer, listen to me very well. You need to believe God. Have faith and believe. God will do it. Just be still and know that he is God. And like Pascal already said, keep this. If you keep nothing at all, just keep this from today. That in your ridicule is your miracle. Just keep that. Who knew that Joseph's imprisonment will bring the one who will take him to the palace into prison so he'll be connected to the palace. Nobody knows it, but God knows exactly what he's doing. So in your ridicule, it's your miracle. And if you said the prayer by giving your life to Christ, look for a Bible-believing church. You can join my brother Pascal in his church. People like Christ in ministries at Dakuman um, Marshalls University College. And you can... He will help you or whatever you need. He will help you. Uh, Pascal, please give your number to them. Anybody who comes can just give you a call. Okay. So number is 024-88-910-33. Mm -hmm. Again, 024-88-910-33. 024-88-910-33. Mm -hmm. 
9103. Um, that is where time will bring us. That is where we will wrap up. And you can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Shalom Broadcast. Shalom Broadcast. Shalom Broadcast is the one where you just follow us there or send us a message on that social media handle. Or you can also send us a message at Shalom Broadcasting on Facebook. Shalom Broadcasting of, on Facebook. And then send us an email, just a prayer request or whatever. Send us an email at God in me, G I M, G I M, G I M at sbngana.com, G I M at sbngana.com. And we will definitely respond to you. Or if you want to get directly in contact with that via phone call, you can call us on 054 6521 My name is Daniel Delong. I have been your wonderful host. This has been God in me. God has always been with us. I am on a mission, and definitely we will surely get there. God bless you. See you again next time. Bye bye.